I got a feeling that this year will be great for new and also existing graphic design software. There are many Adobe alternatives right now on the market. There are a few more announced and there are some big updates coming up as well. So I think there will be a bit of shift and evolution in this space for 2D graphic design creative software, you can say. I tried to draw some kind of graph map, a battle map, you could say. Here it is. We got a different user groups and different software covering those areas. That's just version zero. So if you got any suggestions, drop them in the comment below. But what we're going to do today, we're going to do a first major shift, first adjustment to this little battle map. All right. So I'm going to copy this whole artboard and we're going to create a version one and put uh, two new players on the board. Okay. So we got two new programs released and are both from respected companies in the graphic design space. So the first way you want to place here is Piximator Pro. It was recently bought by Apple. So now they got support of this multi-billion dollar company and they're aiming into this photographer space somewhere around here, I believe. All right, because here we got photographers and this big bubble on the left, that's simply casual users. Okay, so let me just place Pixelmator Pro somewhere here, capturing a bit of photographer and casual space here in between. And I don't think it's a big bubble right now. It's limited only to Mac users really. So it's rather small and we will see how the Apple will deal with that in the near future. All right. So we got new entry here between photographers and casual users for Mac, a perfect cheap software that can help you edit your pictures. Okay. You know what? Maybe a bit lower. It's kind of overlapping with Affinity Photo a bit. So let's take a bit of that space as well. Let's attack Affinity Photo. All right. And then another program that we need to add in this first update is one from Corel Draw. All right. So Corel released their own version of Canva or Adobe Express. So as you can see, the biggest bubble on this map is casual users, regular users, not educated in graphic design, not very much interested in graphic design, people that simply need to do a social media post or a poster, or they need to do some banner, just casual users. They don't have intention to spend weeks learning the program. They just want to jump in, maybe use some template and finish the project quickly. They have always been here, but this group is growing rapidly, especially after the lockdown and, and Canva is a free app. So this user group is huge. That's what Canva is. All right. And there's also a competitor for Canva from Adobe. After they see the big success of Canva, they release their own casual design software called Adobe Express. Here it is. But as you can see, this space is pretty big. So there's an attack from Cora, you can say. So they are now pushing forward. So let's push forward into this casual space just a little bit because this program is not very popular just yet. We will see how it will do in the future. And this program is called CorelDRAW Go. So a casual version of CorelDRAW that will run in the web browser like Canva, like Adobe Express, but it's not free. It's paid. So we just snap it a bit and we'll see that it will, it will grow or no. But that's a new player from Corel. They try to capture a bit of this casual market. All right. Are there any changes to the size? Yes, I think the casual group grow even bigger so we can make this a bit larger, I think. OK, slightly larger AI group, at least bigger. All right. So that's the change we got on the user side. And also here for Adobe, they got this big push towards AI as well. And they even sacrifice some of the core audience, some photographers actually moving away from Adobe as they're not happy with this big push to AI. And we got this also big controversy about the kind of using uh, user work to train AI. That's not really what happened, but we got some 
users that move away. So this is a bit slightly smaller and AI is pushing towards here, towards this AI future, definitely with their own Firefly. Okay, so we got some changes here and how about Affinity? Affinity now is part of Canva family. So we're going to unite those two shapes as they playing the same game now. Okay, so as you can see, thanks to purchasing Affinity, Canva managed to expand towards this more professional direction. So away from this casual bubble to capture a bit of those photographers and designers as well. Okay, so that's what happened. Adobe tried to purchase Figma and if they success with that, they will tell you almost the whole designers bubble and that's exactly what the government was afraid of, so they did not allow Adobe to purchase Figma. This deal was cancelled because they will create a monopoly in this sector. All right, so as it is, Figma is still standalone. Then we got digital art here. There's a big bubble for Procreate and this empty space here because Procreate invite many new users into that space as well. So they kind of growing the bubble themselves. All right, so that's what it is. We got the biggest bubble for casual users dominated by Canva. Canva purchased Affinity and bite into the semi-professional professional users here. We got new entry from Apple itself. Pixelmator Pro trying to capture photographers and casual photographers. Adobe continue to push towards AI even by sacrificing some of the old core audience. And we got big mess here in the designer area. They're fighting for the smallest pie really hard. We got Affinity, Core, we got Figma, we got Adobe. All right, and there's a new entry from Core and they try to push towards casual users by releasing easy to use web-based app called Core Draw Go. All right, so that's our first update. I think this year will be really interesting about a new software, big updates to existing software. So. Let me know in the comment which program should I put it here. That's just simplified version. If I put all of the programs that exist in this space, it will be so cluttered that we cannot understand the graph anymore. But if there are many comments highlighting one certain software, I will definitely put it in so we can track them. And if I make a huge mistake here and you want me to correct that or simply scold me, let me know as well. All right, so that's our first update on graphic design software in 2025. After next big release or update, I will try to update this graph as well. So stay tuned, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next one.